Hi, we continue on Unit 7. We now focus on Lesson 2. In this lesson, we look at critical thinking in criminal intelligence and its limitations. We focus on the difference between criminal and national security intelligence. We study the challenge to undercover actions. We view the ILP and the widening security agenda, the conclusion and agenda for the future. Critical thinking in criminal intelligence, what are the limitations? Consistency. To be reliable, criminal intelligence must go through a cycle based on established and accepted parameters. This does not always happen. Many police departments have developed their own way to produce criminal intelligence, and sometimes even divisions within the same department will use these similar practices. This lack of consistency generates noise and confusion for the clients of criminal intelligence products. Rigor. To be accurate, criminal intelligence must go through rigorous analytical processes using appropriate analytical methods. As with consistency, this does not always happen. Police departments do not always hire analysts with sufficient methodological backgrounds to conduct sound analysis based on relevant questions or hypotheses. Conceptual background. To have sound assessment of what the big picture is, Analysts must possess a strong conceptual background. To be analyzed and understood, crime trends, atypical crime situations, and emerging threats must be placed in perspective and based on a relevant analytical framework or strategy. Time agenda pressure. Police departments deal with emergency security problems and often face controversial social issues. Criminal intelligence units or divisions work within very short timetables and are exposed to internal and external pressures related to political agendas. This can disrupt the quality of the intelligence and jeopardize the rigor and consistency required to produce accurate and reliable products. What is the difference between the two? Do they share the same mission? Usually not. Criminal intelligence units, units fall under a broader mission of protecting and serving citizens first. National security agencies protect the interest of the state and its institutions first. Do they share the same objective? No. The objective of criminal intelligence is to produce analysis that will feed operational units or decision makers on how to deal with common law crime. National security intelligence aims to neutralize the threats against the state and promote its interests, using political violence or propaganda that rarely involves common law crime. Do they share similar techniques? Usually, yes. Both use a similar range of technology and information gathering tools. National security intelligence has access to powerful resources like geospatial imagery, communication interception systems, and drones. There are similar techniques but differences regarding the tool's capacity and accessibility to them do exist. Do they share the same sources of legitimacy? Usually, no. In Anglo-Saxon countries, like the United States, the legitimacy of the police, including criminal intelligence, is coming from the criminal justice system, the prosecutor, the judge, and the jury. The USAIC gets its legitimacy from the executive branch and is accountable to the U.S. Congress. Do they have the same ethics? Certainly not. Criminal intelligence activities are limited by numerous legal constraints, courtroom procedures, 
and constitutional rights. National security intelligence is limited by a small number of regulations, and most of the reprehensible operations are covered and most often unknown. Challenges to undercover activities, intrusive tactics, police informants, and special witnesses. For police departments weigh their success using measures like conviction rates and sentences, which can augment the use of intrusive tactics, police informants, or special witnesses. The problem with these approaches are courts usually do not like those tactics because they might infringe on constitutional rights. Police informants or special witnesses are usually looked down upon by the courts and juries because of their criminal background. And people are not fond of snitches. Challenges to undercover activity. Proportionality. It must be protected to avoid any cross influence from national security intelligence like ethics, norms, and practices. Intrusiveness use of force and other coercive tactics used by national security intelligence agencies must be avoided by criminal intelligence units in law enforcement. A storing and protection of private information. It remains a constant challenge for police departments as well as public institutions dealing with sensitive information. The Snowden leaks of the NSA's metadata and eavesdropping on innocent citizens of the world and the disclosure regarding the stop and frisk, known also as show me the papers, tactics of the New York Police Department have brought this issue to fore. ILP and the widening security agenda. Since the implementation of the intelligence-led policing models, police departments have understood and accepted how this approach offers broader opportunities. It has strategic applications, especially regarding analytical possibilities and a variety of social problems that influence crime and social disorder, such as poverty, illegal immigration, race, and cultural issues. Since 9-11, the merging of criminal and national security intelligence and specific security issues, such as terrorism, organized crime, and money laundering, make it necessary to develop and apply intelligence-led policing. The development and application of ILP changed the way law enforcement agencies viewed what were then considered to be unfamiliar partners, banks, insurance companies, hospitals, telecommunications, and IT companies. These same partners became valuable due to the interoperability of information technology, databases, and communication channels. In conclusion, the agenda for the future. The following should be considered a priority for police departments that want to operate an effective criminal intelligence division or unit. Become more intelligence-led. Decision maker and analyst should participate in conceptual training. Police chiefs should work closely with analysts. They create integrated reporting mechanisms and intelligence should be disseminated across the department. The agenda for the future also looks beyond tactical perspectives and adopt an intelligence approach, including all tactical and operational strategic levels of intelligence. Collect feedback and respond to criticisms. Develop lessons learned policies and procedures move beyond the intelligence security issue, and prepare the next generation of leaders in the criminal intelligence field. What we covered in lesson two, we look at critical thinking in criminal intelligence and its limitations. The difference between criminal and national security intelligence. We continue with the challenges to undercover actions, 
we saw the ILP and the with widening of the security agenda. We had a conclusion and focused on the agenda for the future. Thank you for attending the lecture. I hope it was helpful. And we have only Unit 8 to go. The final proposal or report and the final exam. I wish you the best of luck in the final exam and I will communicate with you later to give you pointers on how to succeed in it. Thank you.